here in live stream. Got it. Yeah, got it. All right. Setting up. I never know when it's actually live. It says it's live here, but it's redirecting on my server. So uh, okay. we'll give it a second. Yeah. Okay. I think we're live now. <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Well, wonderful. Happy Thursday, everybody. Hello and welcome. It is my great, great pleasure to be convening again for our series on solutions. Um, uh, Mariah and I were just talking about the weather because, and I know that's usually how I start these conversations. And I'm feeling very guilty right now because in Asheville yesterday, it was 22 degrees and sunny and it felt like springtime. <laughs> And it's a uh, typical Dutch eight degrees and raining in Holland. Is that correct? Yes, Anyways. correct. Yes. <laughs> but it is it is a little bit, um, I don't want to say disconcerting, but it is unseasonably warm here in, in Asheville. So um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Enjoy how this... it, right? Well, yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for joining. It is my great, great pleasure to welcome Mariah Remigius from Fiction Factory today. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about circularity and exhibitions. And this is one of the hottest topics right now, um, especially in the, the cultural world about exhibitions and how we can make them more sustainable. And Mariah, you have done a completely circular exhibition. So I'm really excited to hear more about that. But maybe before we get started into the details, could you explain to us a little bit more about what is circularity? What is circularity? Well, first, thank you for uh, inviting me here uh, and uh, to have this talk together. So um, circularity, yeah, well, so for me, it means uh, um, not throwing away any more uh, of the beautiful uh, exhibitions that I built. So, yeah. Perfect. Well, I think that's a great, that's a great way to look at it. And I think it's always important to contextualize it within the framework of your work so that's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. All right. So how did you get inspired to design a circular exhibition? Well um, so maybe I have to tell a little bit about what Fiction Factory is doing and my role in it. So um, perfect. Yes yeah, so a Fiction Factory is a, a, um, a company based in the north of Amsterdam and we build custom uh, interiors uh, business to business and interiors for restaurants, hotels but also for museums. And uh, I've been working there for a very long time. And uh, but three years ago, I was sort of like a bit, yeah, is this it sort of situation? Maybe a midlife crisis, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> not that old yet. But <laughs> uh, so, and then I did some things just sort of out of my comfort zone. And one of the things was that I did research at one of my clients, that is the Rijksmuseum. And I did research in a circular exhibition building. And for me, that sort of like when I was doing this research, I was sort of like, it totally hit me that, uh, yeah, well, I have been making very beautiful waste for a very long time. Yes. That's a good point. <laughs> yes. So within Fiction Factory, we, you know, we, we weld, we saw, we CNC, we 3D print, you know, we are the makers, right? So we produce the exhibition. So, um, um, yeah, and, and, and most, you know, some of the exhibitions will last very long in the museum, but most of them, um, like the temporarily exhibitions, they, uh, well, three months or something like that, they will stay for this time. So, uh, and this is the job that we do quite uh, often. So, uh, yeah, so this is how I got into it. Okay, it's so yeah. interesting. And, you know, you were talking about how you make beautiful waste. And um, we were actually having a conversation in one of our key futures meetings. Um, uh, uh, I guess it was last week. I can't remember. I can't keep track of time these days. So recently, um, <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking about the, about waste. And um, one of our key coaches in in Moscow, who is a uh, is um, uh, the head of an organization called Moscow Circular and who I know through the Ellen MacArthur Foundation was saying that she doesn't use the word waste anymore. And she always talks about resources. And I thought that was so brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Ekaterina, by the way. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was really, it's interesting because if you label something as waste, then you you are automatically removing the value from it. And what you're talking about, you know, making beautiful waste, it's clear that there's value there, there's beauty there in the materials that are there, but because it's seen as waste, it's seen as disposable. So I, I just, I really loved what you were saying with that about making beautiful waste. <laughs> so 
so obviously you saw that there was an inherent value still in these materials, even after they were used in the original purpose. Yeah. So how did, what do you, what do you do with materials that, you know, are waste? They're not waste as we know, but yeah. that um, are finished using their primary function. Yeah. So, um, so at this moment, you know, I've, I've been building now a few uh, circular exhibitions and then from everyone, I learn a little bit more and, and sort of like creating a new uh, system around it. And, um, um, and the, the hardest thing, so not, so first it's, it's not materials, uh, you know, so we make the stuff from, the, um, uh, with materials, right. But, um, uh, when we throw them away, they are pedestals or uh, vitrines or um, I don't know, wall pieces of the walls. So um, yeah, and we've, so we put a lot of effort in there, right? So a lot of craftsmanship in them to produce them. So it's not only the materials that you throw away, it's also our craftsmanship, uh, you know, all this blood, sweat and tears to put, <laughs> that we put in there, right? That's so true. That's, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Good point. Yeah, yeah. And we also we also throw away sort of like our engineering and also the good stuff that we make, put in there. So yeah, um, yeah so to um, make it circular, we have to start completely from the beginning. And uh, um, so this is what I'm really going for, right? It's also to change the question that the museum is asking. So that, like normally they don't ask me for a circular exhibition, but I'm saying that if you ask for it and if you set a goal for it, you know, how far do you want it to be circular and sustainable? What what is what is important for you to to have in the exhibition and then uh, so then we then i can also give a better answer and to you know to be challenging that as well um so when we produce things now i for myself i say we have to design for this assembly use less materials as possible use good materials and um and i have a fourth principle in this as well is um not to design uh, round stuff or bend it stuff <laughs> <laughs> Because that's not circular. <laughs> Round is not circular. I can say in building world. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and why is it that that round stuff is not circular? Well, because all sheet material in wood in steel is square or straight, right? That's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah, and so uh, sort of like if you have like a, a straight sheet and you make a round top, right? So then you have left left over. You know it already. So. <laughs> Funny, yeah, abs I never thought about that. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah. Round is not circular. You, <laughs> <laughs> it's like an oxymoron or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but also to to bend stuff, right? To make things round. And mm -hmm. any with any material, you need to put you put, you have to put more energy into it to to melt it or to uh, or to make a big, bigger construction behind it. So yeah, yeah. No. It's, it, more likely not be able to be used in a different context if it's no. if it has that yeah. manipulation to it oh yeah. that's so interesting yeah okay. <laughs> okay so so tell me a little bit about because i actually went and saw one of your exhibitions at the reichs museum it was the caravaggio exhibition mm -hmm. if i'm correct yeah. um which was phenomenal um i i do have to say and we've had this conversation i was a little disappointed that they didn't advertise in big letters you know caravaggio small a circular exhibition yes. <laughs> i think that that would have yeah. been fabulous and it yeah. was um it was not really portrayed to the public portrayed to the audience that the exhibition was circular yeah. which yeah. i think was a missed opportunity but once again we're learning this is the starting point yes. but um i would love to hear a little bit more about that that specific exhibition what your what your process was what you did with the with the all of the amazing things that you made yeah. um, after the show was over. Yeah. So um, uh, as a building company, we always come at a certain moment in the whole whole line of the whole planning of um, building an exhibition, right? So mm -hmm. I think uh, most of the museums are busy for a few years already to sort of like think about an idea of an exhibition. Oh, let's do Caravaggio, for example. <laughs> let's choose one. And, uh, and then the, the designer comes because we are not the designers of exhibitions. And then uh, after, I think, one and a half, maybe two years, then we pop up, right? And then we have uh -huh. like six months left to, um, to produce this. Mm -hmm. So there's a long time in front, but then we are there for six months. So um, we come when the design is finished. So interesting. Okay. Yes. You're not part <laughs> of the design process, which that no. potentially no. could be difficult to make something circular if the design's already in place. Exactly. Yeah. So the design of that ex exhibition was not originally circular or with sustainability involved. 
Of and course, it was, uh, in, you know, some designers uh, kept in mind sort of like the, the sizes of the materials a bit, but it's sort of like, well, not really, not really important for them. It's sort of like the designing and the outlining of all things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, but then, of course, I had done the research at the Rijksmuseum and I said, well, I'm going to, so this, is, this was the first exhibition that I built in a circular way. I said, I'm going all the way for it. So let's see what we can do to make it more circular. Fabulous. I love yes. it. Love your ambition. Love yes. your attitude. <laughs> so, um, and um, technically, uh, the material, the, the design of the exhibition was not that difficult, right? So there were some walls, uh, some new walls that we had to build up quite a few of them, but you know, walls, building walls is not that complicated. And the walls were um, cladded with uh, frames with fabric around it. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of uh, pedestals with um, mm -hmm. plastic covers over it. So um, I don't know how you call them, the, 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 the glass boxes, right? So that's called glass. Yeah, boxes. pedestals, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, the, um, the, the covers, um, yeah. yeah, the covers. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now, now you're making me draw a blank. It'll come to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, so there were a few parts, right? So I think five parts that we sort of like had to build, but quite a lot. So uh, the walls, um, we, we have been using our standard uh, wall system for this. So we have been reusing this. So this is sort of like a, a, like a booth building wall system, but also for exhibition building. So I think this was the biggest part that we used like in kilos, because I everything that I've been used, I've been sort of like calculating it back to kilos. So the okay. most part that we used in the exhibition were the walls that we already had so i think we were already circular for 20 percent of it <laughs> of nice it. oh great like well, that's walls, right so, perfect starting point yeah yeah so that was simple but normally we would clad the walls with uh mdf so this is like a really dense um, a fiberboard material okay. and and this board this uh is sort of like almost the cheapest material that there is and um um but I've always used this in a way to, yeah, I always use this once, right? So it's, it's a one use material after it, I throw it away, but this material is not able to be recycled. So it will be burned. Oh, always. yes. Okay. And is it the reason it's not able to be recycled is because it's a composite material? Yeah. Okay. Then really they can't take it all apart. And I think one yeah. company now in Belgium is able to do it, but it's really in pilot phase still. So yeah. and let's not make it somewhere. Yeah. And why can't these this board be reused like the walls are being reused? Well, it's sort of um, it's it's it gets damaged easily. So the, the so uh, it's sort of but it's also you know in our minds, right? So and it's also the material is quite heavy and it's like uh, so it's yeah, so we, <laughs> we throw this away. Okay, and it's just said, that's standard practice, is yes. right now, which we're <laughs> so changing. I was going to use I think about one hundred sheets of this material. Oh and wow. Yeah, so I said to myself, so what kind of material do I take back, right? So, and then I was like, yeah, I like multiplex. So I like a wooden a veneer layered uh, multiplex sheet. So uh, if I go too technical, just ask, right? If you... Oh, no, yes, please. And I, I will, I will. <laughs> and uh, um, so, and this is material that I really like to use. So I use it also for construction work. So I thought, okay, you know what? If it's painted and with maybe with a bit of wallpaper on it, it's okay, I will take it back. So I decided to clad the walls with the multiplex material which is more cool. expensive but i said to myself well i am going to take it all down so i will take it back so it's an investment rather than a purchase yes there you go so you can use okay. it multiple times and so actually in the long run it is less expensive exactly yeah so uh so this is what i did so um and uh yeah so this is all about the wall so this is sort of it but sometimes we also make special wall pieces so we make special framings and uh this i also made out of the multiplex material so i could reuse it again cool so these are the walls and then the uh vitrines um so there were i think about 20 pedestals like the pedestal mm -hmm. the wooden pedestals in there and um the designers already designed it with sort of like a birch plywood so okay. this is quite expensive and um i think it um it's sort of sustainable but then i found out about a material that one of my suppliers had in their warehouse and they were not able to sell it somehow mm -hmm. and it was sort of like a normal a cheaper plywood much lighter and uh from poplar so and this is sort of like ecoplex so it's a fast growing plant in the, yeah. um, in europe so that's good yeah yeah poplar's a Birch plywood popular tree down here too yes. <laughs> and the birch plywood in europe comes 
most of the it's not from Europe, it's most of the time from Russia. So it's oh yeah. okay, yeah. And um, um so this was a better material and I was I had to color them, so I also used um a bio-based oil uh, finish. Oh nice. So it really became oh it was really amazing. So this is now the, one of the the, the coverings, uh, the materials that we use now, sort of like um uh yeah, really nice in deepness, really <coughs> the wood. So that was good. And the funny thing was, is that uh, the, the statues on the pedestals were not always that big, right? So we, oh. but the, the pedestals were. Yeah. So, yeah. so like, I think I made uh, four pedestals that were two meters long, one and a half meter high, a little bit this wide sort of, and there was just this little screaming out Italian uh, statue on it. Yeah. And one of my uh, colleagues said, what? Are they putting this small statue on this big pedestal? <laughs> <laughs> All this material used for just this one, and and I said to him, "Well, you know, you you see this as a as a as a as a big pedestal, but I see two big sheets of wood still in there. So if this exhibition is over, I will cut out these two big sheets, and then I'm going to reuse it. If it was like small pieces, I would not have reused it. So." That's actually a really interesting point. I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes okay. I always, so one of my principles is less is more, but sometimes more is less sort of. <laughs> more is more opportunity, maybe. I don't yeah, know. Well, something, something, that, something, yeah. something like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, of course, because indeed, like one of the things we have issues with, uh, you know, I think you all know by now I'm an art conservator by training. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you cut out like foam that, um, you know, big pieces of foam to, use for storing something for example um you know you save the bigger pieces but then you get these tiny little off cuts and what do you do with those and you know there are really great ways to reuse those by the way you know stuff a pillowcase and make a cushion out of them mm -hmm. but indeed this idea that you know the smaller off cuts tend to be um more difficult to reuse so yeah. that's that's a really that's a really interesting point so even though it looked like it was more material there was more opportunity exactly yeah cool okay so that right. was cool yeah and um uh then normally we sort of uh we also made sort of like who's that over there oh max oh max i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i keep looking at him he he was barking <laughs> but yeah, um okay. yeah he, he wants to join <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so he's he's still a little bit on watch i, I don't know how many uh uh people uh, know about this he had surgery um oh. a couple weeks ago he's had some some health issues so i have to i have to make sure he's not licking his stitches so i do apologize <laughs> i'm not distracted i am here i just have to i am in this habit now of having to check on my dog every minute or two <laughs> so apologies oh, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll have him come say hi at the end <laughs> yes, yes do that. <laughs> anyway, I am paying attention, I promise. No, no, that's so, okay. No, that's so please okay. continue. <laughs> so we also had to make um, uh, big um, stages mm -hmm. where like there was a big horse with a man on it. And uh, so, and all these stages um, were also made with sort of like uh, uh, systems that we already had in our warehouse. But I also did the root. Um, so all the construction bit that I did was always with screws. So normally I use staples and glue. So just very quickly put it together but now we used screws so oh, well that makes screws. sense of course yeah but this uh, particular thing so on these stages but also on all the pedestals the designers wanted sort of like a thin layer of stainless steel okay to make it more shiny and you know this is the design go. right and stainless steel well the material itself is not so sustainable and um uh, of course putting the statues on you know you have to sometimes drill holes in them to connect the statues on it or whatever so it you know it will get damaged but um i was like okay so if normally i would glue the stainless steel on the wood and now i said i have to do different right so but i yeah. didn't know exactly where the statues would be because then i would screw it underneath the statue maybe but so this was not an option never an option because Curators like to change stuff around. <laughs> really? Crazy. People change their minds? Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I decided, you know what? I'm going to put um, 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 uh, uh, Felcron on it. So I made a sort of like extra layer. So I thought uh, Felcron, oh. right? Is the name, right? Felcro, yeah. Yeah, Felcro, yeah. Yeah, so, interesting. Um, yeah, interesting, right? So, and the Felcro, I also put 
underneath, I put double-sided tape underneath, and no, not double-sided tape, but uh, duct tape underneath. So the felt uh -huh. has, a, has such a good sticky glue on it. So it will stick to the stainless steel. I don't want that as well. So extra, extra tape. So, but this was sort of like the thing to do. So I could uh -huh. take it all off again. Oh, that's so cool. What a brilliant idea. Yeah. You are quite a genius. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I think, I think that's what's so exciting about this is that um, it requires creativity. And yeah. that's one of the reasons I think that the creative sector, that cultural sector is going to be leaders in sustainability, because we mm -hmm. have the concept, we have the mindset to look mm -hmm. at something and say, okay, if I want to be able to reuse this, I can't use glue on it because, yeah. you know, then it's, you can't take it apart as a yeah. conservator. Trust me, I know this. <laughs> <laughs> so how can I make this disassemble, yeah. disassemblable? Is that a word? Yeah. Can we just make, we just, <laughs> we just make up a new word? <laughs> Disassemblable. I'm going yes. with it. I'm, that's my new thing. <laughs> yeah, I think that yeah. that's. I, I I have a new favorite word. All right, yeah. so <laughs> so we we discovered a way to use yeah. Velcro and duct tape to make yeah. it disassemblable. All right, yeah. good, amazing. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. So then uh, I think, and I only is left so because to tell a little bit and then I have the framings on the walls right so the designers had a um, um, they really wanted sort of like a soft covering on the wall so we uh, they already designed that we sort of like had panels of three meters by 90 centimeters wide and I think there were about 240 of them wow yeah yeah this and was a big exhibition yeah, that's an exhibition. Yeah, so <laughs> and uh, um, uh, so and so there were ten rooms, and every room had a different color. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so they made a whole layout for every room where it's not like you had the the, so the the wall panels and then a pedestal, so it's all ninety centimeters wide, so all system right. So and then I said to them, well, so these wall panels are going to be upholstered with fabric, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they had this uh, fabric from uh, Quadrat. This is a Danish uh, brand, mm -hmm. and uh, and I said, well, this is furniture uh, fabric, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I said, but this is one meter forty wide. So the panels they designed were ninety centimeters. So you have to so ninety centimeters, but then of course you upholster it, right? You go around the corner. That's five centimeters because it's how thick they want it to be, and then you have to go to the back to staple the fabric, right? Right. So ninety plus five is one hundred plus a little bit is one hundred ten. Uh -huh. So, but the fabric is 140. Yeah. So I will have waste. Yeah, very, you will have very, extra. Yeah, for very beautiful uh, material. Yeah. And um, and I said, you know, I was sort of like checking, can I make the frames wider? <laughs> oh. Yeah. More oh, is yeah. more is less. I said to more that. is so less in this. More is yes. less space. Yes. Yeah, more and uh, space. and then I was sort of like you know you know challenging what I what I can do with the designers and I said let's do one hundred right so one meter wide because I think if I would go wider they will be a bit a bit clumsy right yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they said uh, oh yeah that's okay but then the the museum said but well uh but this means we have to change the whole design right because everything was all lined out right so oh one, yeah okay two, oh so and then you know you have fire things going on the cameras and all these things that you know so details, <laughs> details. <laughs> <laughs> and then i said you know what i'll do it right i will change the design and do all this, the 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 uh, check it out with the with the drawings and the the and the designers were also really into it sort of like you know flexible in this way as well oh cool but making them 10 centimeters wider of course it's i could have made them much wider and have less waste of the material but now it's sort of like it's still stylish but it also meant that for 200 um uh, frames going 10 centimeters wider i ne also needed to make less frames once again more is less more is less <laughs> oh my gosh this is amazing yeah, yeah and i i love the fact that you you asked and i think that that's that's so important and i think that it's a yeah it, goes back to you know our role and it's so important that we take the opportunity to ask because if you hadn't asked then you wouldn't have been able to save all of this material yeah and um you know just why not and i i so it's i think uh I always like to tell this story. I, I was talking with a friend of mine who was an architect and he was showing me plans for a museum that he was doing renovations on. And um, 
he showed me the design and I was like, this is really stunning, but where's the green stuff? Like, I don't see any reference to sustainability in here at all. And he was like, oh, well, the, the museum director didn't ask. And I actually happened to know that museum director. So I called up the museum director and I said, hey, you know, I just saw your design. It's beautiful, but where's the sustainability stuff? And he said, well, the architect didn't give us any options. And I was like, so whose responsibility here is it to ask? Well, if the museum director had asked, the architect would have included it. If the architect had asked, then the museum director would have been receptive too. So all we need to do sometimes is just ask. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad you did that. This is this is evidence that if you ask, yeah. oh you no shall no receive. no, this, this is this is this is proved already. You know, it's yeah. It's, it's sort of like uh, sometimes I feel I'm a preacher about circular economy. I love I always, that. Yes. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and I always challenge my suppliers, my clients, sort of like, hey, did you take a look at this, right? So and yeah. did you think about this one? You know, a lot of times I have problems with budget, right? So there's always less, but less budget. And I always say, well, did you take a look at what you already have? Not building stuff. Save what a money. concept. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a concept yeah. to look at what we've got already. Isn't that yeah. the most sustainable solution there is? <laughs> yeah, so it's sort of, it's sort of a super no brainer, but it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is sometimes you really have to, uh, yeah, point it out and say, can we do things differently? Maybe we, if we have a little bit more time, we can harvest because if you don't have it, maybe someone else has it. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it changes the system a bit, but of course, as you say, it starts with the first question because yeah. they, you know, if everyone asks it the right way, then uh, yeah, you get a better answer. Yeah. yeah. And I think what you say, you know, change the systems a little bit. We know that we need to change the systems like the systems are not working no. and that's a fact. And so yeah. asking those questions to help facilitate that change is essential. Yeah. And I think that it's also, um, you know, about not just our values, but like kind of just a standard way of doing things. And I always talk about this in, in our waste and materials um, trainings, which by the way, we're now changing because as, as thanks to Ekaterina, we are not going to use, no longer going to use the word waste. It's going to be circularity and materials yes. yeah, because yeah. nothing is waste. It's all resources. So I'm now changing that officially everyone announcement. You will now no longer see waste and materials anywhere. Um, uh, give me like a few weeks to transfer all of the <laughs> information on the website and the key books. But in the meantime, yeah. it will now be called circularity materials, yeah, but yeah. this is, you know, when we think about, okay, we need something. Okay. Let's go buy it. Like that's our gut instinct societal reaction. I need, you know, yeah. nail clippers. Okay. I'm going to go buy them. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't think about, oh, maybe I could ask, you know, my, my partner, if they have a pair, or maybe I can ask my neighbor or maybe I yeah. can borrow them for, so I don't know if it's weird to borrow nail clippers. I don't know why I came up with that example. <laughs> I was, I was just thinking of something totally random, but you know, you need something, you think I'm going to go buy it. Yeah. And we have to change that thinking because there are so many resources already available and we know that resources are finite yeah. and one day you're going to go to the store and there are not going to be nail clippers there because we've run out of metal. I mean, that's obviously yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. Metal's infinitely recyclable. Yeah. This, it was a really bad example, but, <laughs> 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 but you know, it's, um, it's that mindset of, I need something. Okay. Maybe I can borrow it. Maybe I can ask someone if they have it. Maybe I already have it. And yeah. it's just in a different form. Um, you know, maybe, maybe I can, get it secondhand or, you know, looking at a lot of different other places that we don't think to look immediately. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. I, yeah, look and see what we already have. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, sorry, please continue. I, I get very excited about this. No, stuff. no, 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 that's really good. That's really good. <laughs> so yeah, we decided to make the frames one meter wide and cool. three meters long. And uh, and I found out that with that, I could also order the, the wooden beams that were in the framings uh, mm -hmm. exactly on three meters. So I, and at the end, I sort of like per, per frame, I had this little piece of wood left over. So that was sort of like really funny. <laughs> and um, and I, said, I said to all my colleagues, I want you to save on this whole project all the waste material, all cool. the leftover materials. Yes, there you go. Yes, I'm there learning. I'm learning. <laughs> well, we're all learning. This is a this is a journey. We're all in it yeah. together. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, uh, so at the end, I had a little bit of box with all those little pieces of wood left over. 
was a good fire. I like fire. So, you know, really not so oh, super, perfect. I like fires. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm a big fan of camping. I'm a big fan of campfires. Yeah, you know, I'm, yes, I'm not judging. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but when the, um, so the frames were also screwed with screws. Mm -hmm. And um, then I went up to the upholstery department that we have. And uh, uh, yeah, then, then I said, well, make it as circular as possible. And then they looked at me as like, um, yeah, well, you can take the staples out, right? Yeah, yeah, we can take the staples out. And then there was a colleague coming over and he said, well, if you make the framings with an insert, maybe we can put with a rubber, you can put it in and then you can only take the rubber out and then the fabric out. Then we did a test for that, you know, because we we, we did, have a, did have a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then the 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 um, um, Jolene from the upholstery, she said, nah, this is not working. This is too, you know, uh, intensive to produce. And I don't get the fabric really on good tension then. OK. And then, uh, OK, then she just started doing it the way she's always doing it, like with lots of staples. Right. So there is one centimeter staple, no staple. A staple and no staple. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> a lot of staples. That's a lot of staples. All right. Yeah. And I was like, okay, okay, you know, this will be a problem at the end, right? If I take it back and I want to take it off, then this is a problem. But yeah. they were so that they were standing, uh, sort of like in front of another office of one of my bosses, and he was sort of like passing by, and he said, "Isn't this the circular project we are doing?" And he said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." We have to come up with a different solution, right? And so at the end, they found out that we, like, we have this for uh, packing st stuff up on pallets. We have this white waxy tape thing. So like on rolls, it's really cheap material. And at the end, they put this in between. So you have the wood, you have the, we put a little bit of a band between it and then the, the fabric, then the staples. And then if you pull on the tape, you can immediately take out of all the fabric. Sort of like Isn't that so <laughs> <laughs> like this. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, it's really cool. But the staples were sort of like they were not like because they're U-shaped, right? But then they yeah. were sort of like sticking out again. But they were yeah. easy now to take out very quick done. Perfect. Oh, that makes life so much easier. Because yeah, it can be it can be really tricky <laughs> taking all those staples out. That's not fun. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah like, really, really. I yeah. I yeah, I, I I think most people know my my COVID hobby was collecting wooden pallets because you wow. you know in Amsterdam they're all over the place yeah. you know yeah. every trash can in the entire city has a pallet sitting next to it yeah. Yeah. so I um, would collect the wooden pallets and then use those to make flower boxes mm. and because um, I had this beautiful rooftop balcony in Amsterdam and um, and getting those things apart sometimes is really <laughs> Like I was like, you know, ripping my arms off trying to get some of these things apart. And sometimes I couldn't. So I would just actually saw like chunks off because I yeah, couldn't get yeah. them apart. But, but that was um, my solution as well. I said, well, okay, okay, you know what? If I can't get the stables out, I just cut down on the beam, right? And then make the beam smaller. Yeah. There you go. There you yeah. go. I mean, there's there's always frames. a solution, right? <laughs> 200 frames means 400 times three meters. It's like, you know, it's sort of, it's a hard job, right? So that's that's quantity. Yeah, that's quite yeah. a bit. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So a beam like that cost about 10 euros, five to 10 euros. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's not cheap either. No. No. So um, well. And then um uh I think what else did we do on these framing? So no, I think this is sort of like it, right? So we hook hang them up with a system that you sort of like for this assembly, right? So mm -hmm. um and we did some extra construction in between for the hanging up the artwork, right? And then uh, the museum asked me to uh, supply 20 extra frames uh, or two for every room extra. Because, okay. you have to, yeah, you have to hang up the arts, art, right? The art pieces, the paintings. Yeah. So, and when you screw through fabric, it could happen that one of the, the threads of the fabric, I'm really going into technical detail, but it's sort of like whoop, you pull it out, right? Okay, yeah, like because a run in your hose or something. It's, a, it's woven material, right? So if you screw yeah. on it, so you can, so it will make the whole frame ugly, right? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I said, now you want me to make 20 frames extra and I want to do less is more, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, is it possible? This is, a, this once again, we're going into super detail here, but is it, would it be possible to like cut a hole first before screwing it so that you don't run the risk of getting the run? This is what I said, but they sort of like, so this is, I think we have to do this whole old exhibition out, new exhibition in, all the artwork in, right, in three weeks. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're not busy at all. You want to go grab a cup of tea or something? I know you've got nothing on your plate. So, <laughs> so oh my um, they don't have, and, and that the thing is, is that when I've been finished with building, right. And when the artworks come in, mm-hmm. I'm not allowed to be there anymore. Right. I, I wow. work a sewing machine and a, and, a, and, a, and a screwing machine, right? So they think they, you know, like uh, the only people on the floor can only be curators or the museum people, not the builders. Okay. I think it's insurance thing, right? Okay. Interesting. Yeah, that's, and that's also a lot of people, right? But um, uh, that's that's true. That's true. There's yeah, a yeah. lot of people and you've got very expensive artworks. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah I can. I can. It's okay. You know, for me, it's no one's mad. To be, okay. To be at one point, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a very patient okay. woman so if like can we do it like this okay we do it like that and I can't handle that very good so. uh, that's fair that's fair <laughs> you don't want to be involved with that part anyway <laughs> no, no. so then I said well now I have to make 20 frames extra right so oh gosh how do I deal with this right when it's left over or whatever and then I said well so so in the rooms are well where there were a lot of paintings I will make a little bit of extra but what I do is I will make extra construction under some of the other panels where I know no paintings will be there. So mm-hmm. if something gets damaged, you can take the one from the other one and put the other one back, right? Okay. And then there will be an empty space, but then I will be ready for you in the workshop and produce within a day a new one. There you go. Yes. That's a great solution. Yeah. So you didn't, they didn't have to have a ton sitting left over, but no. you, you just made sure you were available to get yeah. them any last minute repairs. I think that's brilliant. I think that's yeah. absolutely brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So perfect. And very happened. nice of you. So nothing happened, right? <laughs> and nothing, nothing happened. happened. <laughs> <laughs> so you would have made 20 extra for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Nothing yeah. happened. <laughs> so nothing happened. And cheaper though, right? <laughs> and cheaper. And, che- and it yeah. saves money. That's always the bottom line. Yeah. You know, right now uh, yeah. we're shifting our values away from that. But yeah. at the moment, yeah. that's still part of the conversation. So fair yeah. enough. Yeah. But the thing is, is that people say, well, you know, in, 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 in the Netherlands, uh, sustainable means duurzaam. And the first yeah. word in duurzaam is expensive in the Netherlands. So people That's always- true. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I, 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 of course, I speak Dutch, so I do know this, that duurzaam is the word, but you're right, dur means yeah. expensive. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So people always say, yeah, duurzaam is expensive. So duurzaam, duurzaam is dur. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, there you uh, go. That's, that's bad marketing for sustainability. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think we need to change the name or something to like, uh, good cope. Zam something, yeah. <laughs> something like that, yeah. Cheap Zam, I don't know. What yeah, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Interesting. So this, oh, this is then this is these examples also show that you know I needed to make less panels, you know, making them wider, right? And yeah. then I didn't make the spare ones. So this is sort of like, yeah, it's it can be cheaper, right? So, it can be absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. That's brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. So, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, so now now I've built it sort of like. I didn't build a circular exhibition till this point, right? I built an exhibition that is um, designed for this assembly. Yeah. This assembly materials, <laughs> right? So <laughs> yeah. less materials or maybe a little bit more sometimes, but uh, yeah. so it's not circular. So um, okay. yeah, yeah. So, so what would make it circular then? What takes it from being disassemblable or designed for disassembly, which I think is the correct way yeah. to say that, <laughs> to actually being a circular exhibit? Yeah. It's for me taking the responsibility of taking it back. Yeah. All right. So it's what you do after the exhibition's over. Yeah. Okay. Of course, so, the museum should use it as long as possible. Yes. And no, this doesn't happen. Reuse it and reuse it if possible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, obviously, I think it's also actually a really nice business model for you guys in terms of if you make things that are designed to be reused, then you can just disassemble it and reassemble it in a different way for the next exhibition. Yes. Perfect. So this is, so this is my business model. <laughs> well, I think that's genius. It's sustainable in a non doer way. So it's yeah. not, it's not more expensive. It's yeah. circular. It doesn't, yeah, it places the value on the resource rather than identifying it as waste. Yeah, um, yeah I think you tick all the boxes here. Yeah. Brilliant. Socially sustainable, economically sustainable, mm-hmm. environmentally sustainable. Love it. All right. Yeah. So 
so then obviously you take, you get the materials back then and yeah. all of the, you know, elements that you've created. Yeah. And so then what do you do with those material or those elements? I should say, because it's, as well, you there's, there's very rightfully thing, pointed there's out. There's one thing more that I have to say is that I also discussed with the designers mm -hmm. that I uh, was allowed to reuse it. Perfect. As is. Cool. Okay. Is and that's I guess an important thing because it, yeah. it was designed specifically for that exhibition. So you do need permission to reuse it as is. Okay. And was was the museum interested in in reusing the materials themselves, or were they just okay with giving you the permission to reuse it as you saw fit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, they the, the sort of um, um, yeah I. The thing is, is that they always, I think they haven't asked that question themselves very hard. Of course, they are sort of like looking for other ways to reuse it. But mm -hmm. the, the thing is that the first exhibition had one designer, the next exhibition would have another designer. Mm -hmm. That designer doesn't know about this one. So one of the loose solutions for me would be one designer making more exhibitions because then they know. Or, they, yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Well, then they know the materials that are already in there. They own yeah. it, sort of, like because it's their stuff they designed. And yeah. they are uh, much eager to reuse it because it also helps with the budget again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Another interesting idea might be making like a catalog of material, like what you have available. Yeah. Um, you know, this is what we used in the past. And so if maybe the new designer comes in for some reason, they have to have a different designer. Yeah. They can look and see, okay, this is what was built in the last exhibition. I can use X, Y, and yeah. Z. Yeah. So the communication, I think, is actually what it is yeah. when it yeah. comes down to it. Interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Yeah, and and this, I know the Rex this, music. Yeah. And this and this communication can be quite simple, right? Because yeah. we don't put things on paper and you know, like everything is digital. Yeah, so oh, you just take pictures of it. I have a list it. with all the fabric that I ordered. I have a list of all the wood. I have sort of like all the 3D drawings. So I can share it with you and you can take a look at it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just email it over or just take a take yeah. a look at the exhibition. Actually, yeah. you could physically walk into it and say, yeah. I, yeah. I want to reuse that pedestal and reuse that one. And that wall looks great. Yeah. You know, I yes, think, yes. I think yeah. maybe we need to get the designers for the subsequent exhibitions into the current exhibitions. Yes to yeah. uh, see what can be reused. Yeah. Okay, I think we're coming up with really good solutions today. I like yeah. this. <laughs> Perfect. So, so this is this is already, so this for me is sort of, so when I'm ready with building the exhibition, mm -hmm. now all the materials are stored in a very nice way. So you can look at it, it's climatized area, it's, uh, people don't touch it so much, right? Because they are yeah. in the museum, you're not allowed to touch it a lot. So for me, the museum is now a warehouse. Well, look at that. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. I look at material wise, right? So, yeah. And indeed what you say, right? So now I can invite people to say, well, no, go to the next museum and there you can see materials you can harvest. Yes, yes. Check and see if there's anything in there you want. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Wow. That's so yeah. cool. So yeah. you're not just going to see the artworks anymore. <laughs> no, I don't look at artwork. No. It's an added bonus. <laughs> well, actually, in a way, it is artwork, of course, you know, does, yes. the, these yeah. things are, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's, and I guess that's so interesting, of course, we're talking about looking at things in different light. And yeah, indeed, when you go to an exhibition, you tend to, like, as a visitor, you look at the artwork, but you don't look at the pedestal and you don't look at the walls. You don't oh. look, you know, that's part of the ambiance, but it's not what you, yeah. it, that has like, somehow less of a value, but it, you know, it's actually in a way just as valuable because it's, yeah. it is a work of art. It's, it's engineering, it's creativity, it's design. Um, and you know how can that be celebrated as well? Yeah, yeah. So that's why I always say museums know exactly how to be circular, because that's what they do with the artwork, right? Touche. Yeah. Touche. They document, Absolutely. They wrap it carefully. They transport it. You they know, take they good care it, of it. They do whatever, right? So. Yeah. Yep. They take good care of it. Um, they share it. <laughs> yeah. They clean it up. They restore it. Yes. They yeah, it. yeah. Yeah. They don't. They buy used. Yeah. <laughs> Buy another Rembrandt. Sorry. I, I, I was gonna say I don't think you can get a brand new Rembrandt these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know we just need to take the way that 
that we handle the art and apply it to everything else that we do. Uh, yes. Once again, this is why museums and cultural sector has to be at the center of this discussion is because we are the ones who know how to do it. <laughs> We're already doing it. We yes. also just need to not have such a narrow yeah. focus of just applying it to art yes. and start looking at how we apply it to society. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love this. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> well, I, I seriously think we've solved all the world's problems today. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm done with work now. Like, like I, can go, I can go retire. <laughs> you have to make, you have to make it mainstream now. Okay. Oh, okay. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. So next step is mainstreaming. Yeah. So I, I have a question for you because a lot of times when I talk to museums and um, and exhibition designers about, well, why are we not reusing more? Why are we not being more circular? Um, the problem is storage space. And museums oftentimes say, well, we don't have the storage space to store all of these materials. So yeah, if we make you know something that is completely, um, yeah, that we wanna keep some of the things for future use, we don't have a place to store them. Yeah. Um, do you have any advice or suggestions about, you know, what you can do with materials that you'd like to, that you see value in, or not even materials, but um, items, things that were created um, that you see value in, but you don't need at the moment, but you want to reserve for the future if you don't have storage space? Is there something that, like, I don't know, I'm thinking like a sharing system or, you know, putting it somewhere else or giving it to someone else who can use it temporarily. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. no, 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 this, this is a problem that many museums have. And it's sort yeah. of like, uh, you know, if, if you have to save some money at some point, then sort of like, oh, let, let's skip the warehouses. Right. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah. This is this is a tough one. And so this is why. Um, so when I when I look at the stuff that I built, uh, the stuff that is sort of like really an assembly of materials, right? So uh, like a pedestal that's really glued together because this is, you know, like, oh, you, you cannot see it, yeah. In first stick, so it's really in 45 degrees all glued together. Yeah. And um, um, it's an object. So and for me then, it's really hard to find a new owner for this, this stuff because it's sort of like, yeah, it's too small for my uh, piece of artwork or it's too big. It doesn't have the nice details that I have in my museum or... And so for me, it's it's... I, I sort of like like to make them design for this assembly because then I can materialize it. Uh, but, okay. but but sharing this um, is very hard. But you have to start really at sort of like at the begin point, right? So yeah, you, I think two years ago they already knew they were going to build this exhibition. At one point, the designer made the designs, and at some point, you really know that it exists. Yeah. So for me, that is at the start of the exhibition, and then I have three months, or maybe a bit longer, or maybe a year to share this information and do something yeah. with it. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, and then of course it's sort of, let's hope you, you can always say, okay, if, if you want to use it, it's okay, but I want it back afterwards. And then you can always say, yeah, when do you bring it back? And then you, maybe you can share it a bit more, mm -hmm. but of course this is, this is a bit of a hassle, right? To, yeah. Yeah, so I, th I think- I think you have to choose your battles in this one. So yeah. for me, pedestals, that's a big, yeah, that's a big thing. And it's, it's for me, it's really hard to reuse them in other exhibitions. So I, I'm sharing them, but I will not store them at all because it, it takes so much storing space and they are so specific yeah. for certain uh, situations like with uh, climate control or whatever in it, right? So yeah. um, for this, I, I have now my sort of like, I, I've been copying the nature, like with an old ecosystem, like, Biomimicry. This is yes. a recurring theme in this series on solutions. Oh, really? I think seriously, it's so funny. I think every conversation I've had at one point or another, it comes like we we circle back to biomimicry. That's so fascinating because you know you don't expect to hear that in a conversation about circularity and exhibitions, but here we are. Yeah. Please continue. I'm I'm so excited. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. Also, you know, the whole ecosystem that you know what once waste is food for another. Uh, organism yeah. or uh, someone in your ecosystem so i've been creating sort of like this whole network of people of makers of uh, institutions who would like this right who are oh, able to cut it open and to use the materials then or um and even um yeah so like also uh, other companies who are sharing stuff so it's sort of like yeah and, and when you spread it out you say this is what i have then they they will they come collect it for free cool so yeah. it's it's i think communication planning and most importantly designing for disassembly yeah 
cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think, and you know, I think that it's, it's so interesting because indeed there are, I've, I've had a lot of conversation with museums that are about this specific topic and, oh, you know, we have all this stuff and we don't know what to do with it. So we end up just throwing it away mm -hmm. and, you know, facilitating kind of regional networks to share materials, maybe not even just within the museum world, but also, you know, I mean, these materials can be used for pretty, pretty much anything. Right. Yeah. So well, but what, yeah. I, what I would also say then to museums is, um, well, maybe, uh, connect the building company a little bit earlier to it so that they can also help with their technical skills and their knowledge, Smart. but also Smart. to include them in the way afterwards, right? Because a museum doesn't have a sewing machine, but I do. Oh my gosh, of course. And yeah. so you, you don't have to take the responsibility as the museum for getting rid of everything. You can ask for some help. Yes. <laughs> the concept. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and then we're going back to asking, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> Because, you know, I build stuff the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah of course. Yeah. And you also have the eye for the value of the materials and the and, and the assets that you've yeah. created. So yeah. you can take a look at something and say, okay, well, you know, this this can be reused and this can be disassembled and put together. So yeah. that's yeah. that's really important. Yes, yeah. including the builder in, in the disassembly of the exhibition, not just the creation of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so cool. I, always, I always try to sort of like, um, get the comparison with a sandwich, right? So if you ask me yeah. for a sandwich, then I, okay, I'll take a look what I have and I give you a sandwich, right? But then you say, no, I want a sandwich with cheese, right? And then uh -huh. I, oh, then I give you a sandwich with cheese, right? So yeah. this is what I, but if you say to me, I want it sustainable, but with uh, biologic uh, cheese, right? With, um, then I will sort of like, okay, I will go to the shop and I get that for you, right? Because I want, you're asking this, right? And I supply. There you, there you so, go. And if you're asking, yeah, you know, to me, so, okay, I will only eat half, but then the, the other half, I want you to not throw away in the normal bin, but to put it away somewhere, you know, that it's sort of like uh, it's food for someone else. Then I will make sure of it because you asked me for it, right? Yeah. I could yeah. say, well, this will cost you a little bit more, but then we have a discussion. But if you don't ask me, I will give you just a brown sandwich with hagelslag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I miss Holland. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, of course. That's yeah, no. that's amazing. Yeah. So, you know, if you if if a museum asks me to give a quote for building an exhibition, mm -hmm. they can also ask me to give a quote for getting uh, rid of it in a good way. Absolutely. They and can also I think... challenge me. You say, you know what, Mariah, let's work together on this. Let's make it 30% circular, right? Cool. We are in 2021, 2030, we have to go to 50%. Let's go every year a little bit further. Well, let's do that. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, it's so, it's so amazing to me because I just think that people don't know that there are options. And yeah. so once again, this circles back to let's ask, let's see what the options are. Let's yeah. try and find some creative solutions together. I mean, yeah. if, if we just put on our engineering minds and our creative minds and say like, okay, this makes it not circular and, you know, doing it in this way instead would make it better. Yeah. Look, why are we doing it like this? Let's do it like this. Yeah. And just, being open to that creativity and I think that's that's as I said before you know that's the power of our sector is that yeah. we have those unique skill sets to look at a problem and see a solution and see a creative solution so yeah. I'm just I'm so excited about that yeah amazing amazing yeah. well I know we're running a little bit low on time I have one here. little story to tell little I would love to hear yes like and, fantastic thing so yes tell me I, 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 I'll stay here for another two hours okay. I don't know yeah. <laughs> I just because want to be respectful what of your solutions, time. right? For my all this stuff that I took back, right? All I want to hear things. everything. And uh, so one one of the things that I was using was this really, really, really nice, high quality of fabrics, right? So, mm -hmm. and I I went back to the company, the Danish company Quadrat, and I said, um, so what are we going to do with this, right? So are you going to take it back? I said, no, 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 no. You should donate it to uh, somewhere local, right? And I was okay. like, okay, you know, you're, we're gonna donate it, right? So that's okay. But then, yeah, do it to, to a school. And this is something that I hear before, right? So mm -hmm. donate it to a school. And it's okay. like, hey, this is a thousand meter of fabric, right? Donate yeah, what are you it gonna, to a school. What are you going to do with a thousand meters of fabric? Okay. Yeah. So I went to a school because I was go doing a lecture there for uh, like five-year-olds till 12-year-olds. Okay. And then I said to them, well, you know, I showed them all the exhibition, showed them all the pictures, and then I showed them a big truck. So I said, this truck will be here in uh, two months time. And uh, what are you going to make out of it? Uh-huh. 
and I have taught them all about circularity and, and you know, sort of like make stuff that you will take for and use for a long time. And then one of the girls said, uh, I'm going to make a, um, a knuffel. How do you say knuffel? Oh, uh, stuffed teddy animal. Bear. Stuffed teddy animal bear. out yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> I will never, ever, ever throw away my stuffed animal. And I said, okay, yeah, that, that's a good one. We can make a lot of stuffed animals, but we can make them, right? Yeah. And then um, uh, one of the boys said, um, you know what? You, you give me the whole frames and then I will make a painting on them. We will all make all paintings on them and we bring them back to the Rijksmuseum. I love this guy. I was like, yes, we are going to do this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I love yeah. that. I yeah. love that. That is the cutest. <laughs> That's that is circularity at its finest. And really, That's yes, absolutely yeah. brilliant. Yeah. That's absolutely brilliant. Well, yeah. I promised I'd bring Max up. Come here, yes. come say hi. Who's here? Oh, goodness sake, there he is. So we'll we'll come. Well, he'll come say hi. Aww. So yes, you can He's see his cute. his beautiful haircut from his surgery. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> and Max always likes it. He's back at the point where he thinks that Zoom meetings are all about him. So he's being very uh, needy these days. <laughs> but so uh, this has just been so much fun. So thank you so much, Mariah. But um, before I let you go, I do have one question I always ask everybody, and I did not give you a heads up on this. So I'm totally putting you on the spot. Yeah. Um, but before I let you go, could you please give our audience one tip of one thing that they can do today to start being more sustainable? Um, yeah, more sustainable. Well, I say, um, so we have been talking about asking, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I like sharing. So, um, because if you share knowledge, it can only grow. So please do share. Perfect. I love it. Absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't agree more. And we had a conversation a couple of weeks ago and in, in, a couple of months ago, I guess it was. Once again, I can't keep track of time um, <laughs> about um, with Adam Wallen from We Don't Have Time and we're talking about green hushing and how, um, you know, that's that's the basically the lack of sharing and mm -hmm. how that could actually be more detrimental than greenwashing and how important it is for us to share our solutions and share our knowledge. So mm -hmm. I'm grateful yeah. to hear you say that because I, I could not agree more. Yeah. And thank you so much for sharing. This has been such a pleasure. And um, yeah, I just I think it's so inspirational. And, you know, as I said, if people know that there are solutions and think, oh yeah, of course I could do something like that, or I can at least ask about it, mm -hmm. then um, we're moving in the right direction. So I'm, yes. I'm really excited about that. Yes. Amazing. Well, well, thank you so much, Mariah. And thank you so much to everyone for watching and um, greetings from Max, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys in our next series on solutions. And thank you again to our fabulous guest today, Mariah, for joining us and for sharing all of your knowledge. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.